Since about 2013, it has become more commonplace for the minimum CPU requirement of a game to be a quad core or greater. Developers have begun to utilise these extra cores in their games and often share the workflow between them. This has become more common since the release of the 8th gen consoles, which both have AMD 8 core APUs. Utilising multiple cores means better performance, which is always a good thing, but the downside it brings is that dual core processors are beginning to be phased out due to the increasing complexity of games and lack of optimization. Some games even downright refuse to run on dual core CPUs. This is pretty bad news considering the Steam hardware survey shows that nearly half of all Steam users have a dual core processor. So today we're going to see if dual cores can perform well in various modern games and if they were to buy in 2016. Since I don't have a modern dual core laying around, I'm going to use my i5-4460 with two cores disabled to represent something similar to a Pentium G3450. All I had to do was go into the BIOS and into the CPU overclocking section and disable two cores and you have a dual core. Both the quad and dual core were tested in 10 modern titles no older than 3 years old to see the difference between slightly older games and more recent ones when it comes to dual core processors. For the system specs we have an Intel Core i5-4460, a Gigabyte R9 380G1 Gaming, 8GB of G-Skill DDR3 1600MHz RAM, an MSI B85M G43 motherboard, a Seagate Barracuda 1TB hard drive and a Seasonic S122 520W power supply. First up we have Fallout 4 which ran very smoothly on 4 cores with high settings, never dipping below 42 FPS with an average of 104 while the dual core managed a very respectable 84 FPS. However there was much more stuttering with the dual core in more demanding areas with the frame rate dropping to as low as 11 FPS. GTA 5 ran perfectly fine on 4 cores achieving a minimum of 44 FPS and an average of 68 on high settings. When running the dual core, the game was stuttering all over the place, especially during driving. It achieved a minimum of 16 FPS and an average of 42. This stuttering seems to be a common issue with dual cores with no hyper-treading in this game. In Project Cars, running at 1080p with high settings, the quad core does very well, providing 60 FPS on average with a minimum of 45. However, with the dual core we probably saw the biggest performance drop out of any of the games we tested here with it only able to achieve an average of 36 FPS, 43% slower than the quad core. Turns out that dual cores and project cars don't really get along. On Assassin's Creed 4 we saw pretty much no difference in performance with the average being within the margin of error. The game didn't run particularly well on either core count though, with it hovering around 40 FPS the majority of the time on high settings. The Battlefield 4 hopped on a 64 player tra rogue transmission server and at ultra settings both configs performed well. With 4 cores we got an average frame rate of 82, a minimum of 47 and despite the dual core achieving an average of 21 FPS lower, there was no stutter except for spawning in for the first time and it ran solidly in the heat of the action. In Bioshock Infinite both configs ran very smoothly. The good performance would be because this is a last gen title which even though it looks very good, is not very demanding 3 years after the release. Another game where 2 cores struggled to perform was City Skylines. Running all the cores we sailed through without a problem with 45 FPS on average, but the i5 struggled when only two of its cores were active, with an average frame rate of 29 and a minimum of 12. At least it was quite smooth even at its low frame rate with very few lag spikes. The performance of Dirt Rally was almost the same with both configs, with the same average FPS of 69 and a slightly lower minimum. Both configs ran this game very well at the highest settings and this is the sort of performance I was expecting out of Project Cars. The performance for the quad core in Far Cry 4 was very good as expected, getting an average of 59 FPS, a max of 77 and a minimum of 43. From the get go I knew this game wouldn't run on only two cores so I searched online for the solution. After a couple of attempts I'm pretty certain Ubisoft patched this a while ago so it's impossible to get the game running. It's frustrating because the only reason for this is bad game design since this game starts using core number 3, so obviously a 2 core CPU isn't going to work. Finally we have Rocket League running at 1080p max settings where we had pretty much identical performance on both configs. For the quad core we saw a minimum of 90 and an average of 126 FPS, while the dual core we got a minimum of 69 and actually a higher average of 128. Although this of course is within the margin of error. So 
So from the benchmarks you can see that most games are totally playable on a dual core, often with frame rates similar to its bigger 4 core brother. But some titles like GTA 5 and Far Cry 4 show what might be in store for the future where dual cores are beginning to be phased out. If you're on a budget and have the choice between something like a Pentium G2258 or an AMD Athlon 860K, the Pentium is the clear winner according to this GameSpot article. Where the Pentium beats the AMD chip in almost every game due to 860K's poor single core performance. This may change in the future and the Pentium could soon lag behind. So to conclude, yes, a dual core is still a good choice to play games in 2016. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and if you didn't then leave a dislike. Also make sure to comment on your thoughts about dual cores and their murky future and perhaps subscribe if you would like to see more informative videos such as this. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.